Salutations, my fault lovers. It is Maddie here today bringing you an analysis of an interview with Pete Hines at QuakeCon about the evolution of Bethesda. Now, before anything, be sure to check out the link in the description of my previous video. That is the newest episode of Humanity's Worst Video Games. So I'm a little hesitant to say Pete Hines' name on my channel just because we kind of butted heads on Twitter, but this was too good of an opportunity to pass up as he kind of uh, explains more in depth the wait for Bethesda's next game. So basically going on, what I'm going to be doing is ripping up the quotes from this interview. You can check it out in the link in the description uh, if you want to. And um, basically I'm going to take the core quotes from this and respond to each one and kind of give my analysis on each part of it. These quotes were typed up by the Lone Vault Wanderer. Uh, he made my life a lot easier by typing up these huge quotes. So I really do appreciate it. And if you like my content for fall, then you'll like his. So check him out. Link in the description as well. Anyways, let's hop into this. Okay, so let's start off with the first quote. Pete Hunt says, We don't do sequel stuff. We haven't done anything like year after year after year. We're going to do another one of these things, and we're going to bounce it back and forth between studio to studio. We feel like making a great game is where it all has to start, and if you do that, everything else will come out of it. And that means you can't just churn stuff out every 9 to 12 months and have it be successful. You need to go back and rethink what made the last one great and how do we push that forward even more. That's why there is so long between Elder Scrolls games, and that's why there wasn't a Dishonored 2, 3, and 4. Right after the other, teams need to figure out what they want to do next and why it's going to be different. So my response to this, personally, is that he's speaking about annualization, but there's one key thing I want to note, first of all, is that, like in the Todd Howard interview, uh, the word Fallout comes up, like, twice. It's like a dirty word that they can't mention. And um, he mentions Elder Scrolls, he mentions even Dishonored, but no fall. Why He didn't say, why do you think there's a big gap in between Fallout games, but reasonably so. Anyways, he's speaking about annualization here, and he's saying that the fans need to be patient, because if you want this monster of a Bethesda game that's going to be awesome and blow your pants off, then you have to give them time. And he's saying, he's quite honestly saying that uh, games such as Call of Duty, for example, where people enjoy them and whatnot, but these games are annualized every year and it's very hard for them to take the time to innovate new ideas because they have such set development times where Bethesda kind of runs like a development studio where they choose the time to announce their game and uh, when it's going to release, where usually with Call of Duty games, Activision's like, alright, this is the date, have it done by then. So yeah, so, you know, that's what Peons is kind of talking about here, where it takes a lot of time to make great games, which makes sense. Now, let's move on to the next quote. Then this is followed up by Jeff Keighley saying, Yet there's this fascination amongst the fans that they want you to announce things constantly, when sometimes they're not ready to be announced. You have to deal with this all the time on the internet. I'm sure it's a tribute to how much people care, but there's this tension even if what you're developing that's not announced yet. You take the time to make sure it's ready to talk about, yet people don't seem to understand that. Pete Hines responds to this by saying, It comes from a love. They are not asking us for games they don't care about or don't want to play. People want to be involved and want to know. Unfortunately, we have a slightly different way of going about doing things. We're, we aren't just going to add a one to the name of the last thing we made and stick it out in 12 months. We have a different way of putting things out. We like to take our time. We like to give the developers the ability to say, you don't have to go back and do that last thing. If you want to do a new IP, we should talk about that. So we like to change things up. You should never expect that you are going to get the info when you want. We may or may not be working on the next thing you expect us to be working on. Uh, I think he's taken a, a statement at the Fallout 4 fans out there, but I'd be pretty damn shocked if Bethesda would make one Fallout game and then drop the series and not make another. Anyways, he says, it comes out of the devs. We are not crowdsourcing our next project to essay. Everybody vote and decide what the studio is doing. I have a lot more faith in Todd saying, this is what I want to do next. We're going to stick with that. So when those guys are ready to talk about their games, that's when we'll talk about them and not before. So my reaction to this is that basically, as I stated earlier, before Pete even said this, he kind of gave that vibe at first, but now he's stating it here, that the devs are taking the place of the PR and Bethesda's kind of doing that like, okay, do your thing. Um, basically, what he's saying is that the developers decide when this game is announced. The developers decide um, when this game will be released, not the publisher, which is an awesome thing to see because that's not a common case. Once again, like I said, with Call of Duty, the Activision just sits there and they say, all right, this game's got to be out by November of next year. Have fun. While Bethesda's saying, take your time, do your thing, it's all going to be okay. 
but he's also saying that we're not crowdsourcing our next project and saying that uh, you know you guys are going to pick what happens next. But it seems like Fallout 4 is just the most likely choice since that series hasn't been touched by Bethesda Game Studios in a while. But that's not the point right now. What I like is that he has faith in Todd's choice more than just following what the fans do. And um, I really like that, that kind of boldness from the studio. Anyways, let's move on to the next quote. Later on in the interview, Pete Hines says, We mention games that don't match up to expectations. We're not going to blindly go forward with something that isn't living up to our own expectations. We're pretty self-aware of when we make good stuff and games that just don't get there. We continue to redouble our efforts to try and make sure the game is as good as it needs to be. We continue to stay focused on quality and make decisions that will ultimately result in the best game. So this is a very important quote because it, it's a real look at what Bethesda has been doing lately. If you notice, the past three games that they've released this year have all been delayed. Wolfenstein was delayed into this year. ESO was delayed into this year when it was supposed to release summer of last year, I believe. And The Evil Within was delayed. So that is a clear-cut statement, and they're backing it up by saying that they're focusing on what's the best product, and when they're publishing a game, they're going to give their developer a lot of time. So what I'm seeing here, and if a lot of developers start catching the wind of what Bethesda's plan is, kind of giving the developers the time to make games, Bethesda can actually become a huge publisher if they're just going to kick back and let the developers do their thing and make help, help them make good games. Because Bethesda gets the idea that when even though yes you might have to spend a lot of extra money on that extra development time to make a better game but that if that game is good it will sell more and you will make that money back and some so it's really awesome that they get that idea and this is a very important quote to remember soon after jeff Keeley asked pete what about the idea of the community being more open with what you're developing there has been that trend in that direction. How are you guys adapting to that? And in order to understand what he's talking about here and what he's really asking about, uh, just take a look at Destiny where the fans were really involved in the development with that game, uh, with the beta and the alpha as well, and really just giving feedback to help shape that game. So that is the question that Pete Hines is going to be answering. He responds with, I think there's a lot of people who would argue that we are not, simply by my refusal to tell them what they want to know. I'm going to counter that trend. Basically what he's talking about is everyone constantly asking him about Fallout 4. Anyways, continuing, he says, I think we are doing a variety of things today that are different to the way we might have done them five years ago. I think we continue to evolve how we want to talk about games and when, but we still have this strongly held belief that we want to be able to demonstrate the game in a certain way, not just talking about how it's going to be, but say here it is. Now, one example I want to give for this would be, for example, the leaked Assassin's Creed Rogue, where we have details on what it's going to be, but we won't see it probably until Gamescom when it starts up soon. Anyways, moving on, he says, I'm not just talking about this feature. Skyrim is the perfect example. We could have talked a lot about a lot of this stuff before showing any of it, but the impact was Todd had a demo wherein he showed how all the things were going to work, and that was so much more powerful because you saw how dual wielding worked, and how having a spell in one hand and a sword in the other, and how that felt, as opposed to saying, you can have a sword in this hand and a spell in the other, and while that sounds kind of cool, but then you see someone doing the game and you're like, wow, that's way cooler, that's awesome. So it is being able to demonstrate and show you, here it is manifested, it isn't just an idea on paper, we actually figured it out. We feel like there's an important point to get a game to before you start talking about it, because otherwise it's just a theory and ideas on a page. And wow, 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 Pete Hines, well said, my friend. That is such a detailed way of wording it, it is awesome. Because when you said that Skyrim is a perfect example, I just took this time trip back to, to QuakeCon, what was it, like 20, 2010 I think, or 2011, where Todd Howard was sitting there doing like a 20 minute demo for uh, for Skyrim, and he's just walking around the, the cave in the beginning where you get your first shout and everything, and he's showing off everything in this game. And I just remember sitting there, and when he started talking about it, he was like, yeah, you can use a spell and a sword at the same time. I'm like, that's cool. And then he takes them out, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, I started losing my mind because that's what's awesome about it. And Bethesda is slowly becoming a company with the motto of saying, um, back up your words. You know, when, you, when, you, when they say something, they got to show they mean it. Same thing with the delays and making their games better. Same thing here where probably... 
Fallout 4 may have hit a small delay of some form where they're right now working on the right part of like a demo to form up. But basically they're saying that they're waiting for an announcement time where they can show off a demo and really show off all the features. So that kind of explains what Todd meant when he said we're seeing what sticks is that they're getting all these new features together for whatever new game they're working on. And then when they announce it and they show a demo behind it, they can properly show off each section of these new features. So I get what they're saying here where they're, they're trying to say that it will be announced. So what we have to be excited about is we may be waiting a long time for this game. Not, or not really a long time. I'm saying a long time in total. But what's awesome about this is we almost can guarantee that when we see this game announced, we're going to see a big ass demo with it, which a lot of awesome games don't get ever. So that's one exciting half of it. So it kind of makes the wait feel a little bit easier. But anyways, let's move on to the final quote. Da -da -da -da. Final quote, Pete Hines. We're going to continue to think about and hopefully evolve the ways in which we do that. That being announcing and showing off games, much like the Skyrim reveal. Anyways, doing this Doom thing at QuakeCon is something that we've never done before. The idea was that we want to go to the fans and reassure them that we know what we're doing. We're making something that you should be excited about, and it's going to be a while before we talk about it, but in the meantime, here's a little glimpse behind the curtain. That's something we never would have done before on any game, so we're trying to continue and figure out ways to involve the community, but do it at a time to show it, as opposed to here's what it's going to look like, but we actually can't show you anything in the game. So, I have a lot of mixed emotions from this statement here. First off, I've expressed my thoughts in full detail on the whole exclusive QuakeCon reveal. I know it's a, uh, a free show, but you got fans all the way out in the UK, um, across the ocean, who are not going to fly out to a free show to see a game get revealed. Um, I don't think that that's fair, personally. But that aside, that aside, that's my own personal opinion, that aside, this is exciting because this is kind of teasing in a way that Bethesda's next game could be revealed at QuakeCon 2015. And that's actually a reasonable wait. Summer 2015 was roughly my prediction for the announcement of Fallout. Anyways, because that's trade show se season, but I'll, I'll re-quote what he says here. Um, the idea was to go to the fans and reassure them that they we know what we're doing. So, aka the abusive Fallout fans who have been taking shots at Pete Hine and whatnot, Pete Hines, um, Basically saying, hey, we know what we're doing. We know this is what you want, aka maybe Fallout 4. He says, we're making something that you should be excited about. Maybe Fallout 4, that's something that you should be excited about. And he says, it's going to be a while before we talk about it. So maybe it would be a, it's public knowledge that Fallout 4 is in development, just like uh, the Doom 2014. Um, it was announced at E3. And then they show off a small glimpse behind the curtains to that exclusive audience. And then the awesomeness of this game travels by word of mouth, much like most of the info from YouTube and whatnot usually does. Which is cool and whatnot. I keep saying and whatnot. Um, this is cool, but I really wouldn't want Fallout, a huge game like that, to be an exclusive reveal. Or whatever Bethesda Game Studios' next game is. But I, I get the feeling that their next game announcement will be at QuakeCon 2015 just because of that quote saying we know what we're doing and we're making something you should be excited about. That's what kind of speaks to me as like hey this is Bethesda's next game it's gonna be here. But yeah that is it. Those are my responses to the seven core quotes from either Pete Hines or Jeff Keighley. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'd love to know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Um, also in the description will be a link to this article or this uh, this interview as I stated earlier. But just in case you didn't hear me somehow, um, yeah, go ahead and check that out for the full 14 minute interview. Uh, other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook, keep my discount codes in mind. Other than that, my fall lovers, stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.